Prior to 2014, we really didn't have effective therapy, but uh, starting then we were able to provide cures for patients. And we have, uh, have a range of patients that we treat from the uninsured to those with private insurance. What happened in 2014 is the first of some new therapies that are called direct acting antivirals, DAAs. And these direct acting antiviral medicines were pills that were given for as little as 12 weeks that had no side effects and that cured 95 plus percent of patients. So all of a sudden we have medicines that are effective, safe, well tolerated and available, but very costly. We had these wonderful therapies and we had patients who were being denied for coverage. And that made a conundrum for us. After we met with Mr. Ferber, we discussed these, uh, this conundrum that we had of how we wanted to treat all the patients and provide them this cure that had been long awaited, uh, but we're not being able to get the medications covered by um, the Missouri Medicaid program. The, the, the way in which this was important to us was it now meant that we could treat patients who were coming to see us for management or and treatment of their hepatitis C, we now could um, get therapy for the for these uh, patients. You know, as a physician, we want to treat and and cure everyone that we can with this disease, and to have um, a, a cure out there that we had been literally waiting for for decades that was easy to tolerate, and then be denied treating our patients was something that we just could not. Um, did not think could, we could continue with. You know, as Bruce said, we have effective treatment and it did not make sense to wait until they got sicker or have developed cirrhosis to be able to treat them. So um, being able to provide them treatment improves their health dramatically. So I would say the technology and the science and the pharmacology and the willingness of the physicians are all there to be able to make this happen. It's a matter of um, public health organization and political will to make it happen. And already in the short time that we've had these uh, effective treatments, hepatitis C is now no longer our number one indication for liver transplant. Right. It's already had this impact in a few short years.